We're watching this how it's going to go. This is how it's going to go. Um, because of the absence of some of our presenters who are yet who are yet to feature, I mean who are ought to feature. Who are, yet, who are ought to feature in section one, we may not be able to go by the list in my hand, but we'll have to go by the presence of presenters, by the presenters that are present here. So we have the presenters, let me mention them by their names. We have Mrs. Florence, I mean, Dr. Mrs. Florence in Wiki, Dr. Chin Yerim Ndubuzi online, and we have, um, um, okay, Mr. Etim joined us, but is offline again, hoping that he will soon join us, including myself. So we have four presenters here. So I'm going to start from Dr. Mrs. Nweke, then followed by um, Mrs. Ndubusi, followed by a team, and if a team didn't come online, I will have to present. So let me hand over to um, Dr. Mrs. Sinweke, please, to do justice to your article. Uh, you have 10, uh, 10 minutes to speak to your paper. And um, I know Franca is helping us to keep the time. So please help us to manage the time well. I'm talking about the people presenting. Thank you very much. Dr. Mrs. Sinweke, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. So is it possible for me to share my screen? I try sharing it. All right, let me make you a co-host now, please. Yes, I'll be talking on multi-tenanted residents in low-income communities in Lagos, the reception and precautions through music during COVID-19 era. And with me in this presentation is... All right, thank you. Thanks. With me in the presentation is um, Professor Timothy Nubi Doc, and Dr. Basira Toyalo from the Department of Estate Management, University of Lagos. Yeah, we'll be talking on, like I said earlier, the UN have found that over a billion people live in casual settlements all over the world. The implication is, the people living in this kind of apartment, they have been um, stigmatized or they have some kind of historical stigma that they are, um, well, maybe low income earners, they are not well to do. That's why they are living in such apartments. And then we also know that because they are the living in this kind of areas, they have some peculiarities which make it very difficult for them to assess medical treatment to assess health information and then to get used to what um, the normal people, the people that are well to do, are able to do. Some of this is in the case of the COVID-19 pandemic where they have to wash their hands, they have to use um, uh, clean waters and sanitizers, maintain social distancing and all of those things. A lot of them in all over the world, I'm not just talking about Nigeria, had lacked these basic amenities. Now, Nigeria, coming to Lagos, Lagos that we are talking about, it has its own peculiarities too. It has a lot of people, the containment of all of the spread of this COVID-19 in Lagos was most critical because of its vulnerability as a very high tendency city. And then we have, or we lack the capacity to contain these um, diseases. The research was therefore motivated by concern about the capacity of the people living in face me and face you apartments to adhere to these instructions of personal hygiene and maintaining social distancing. We therefore look at for how do we assess, how do we help these people to get the information that we help them to keep 
their um, health intact to ensure that at least the, the level of infection is not so much. During the Spanish flu, we saw a particular nurse who is popular all over the world then going about from school to school or from country to country educating people on environmental hygiene. We do not want to say we want to go about telling people one-on-one -on -one how to keep themselves, how to maintain social distancing, or how to make sure that um, whatever is being said about keeping safe during the pandemic was given to them. We therefore devised a means. The means by which we got to these people was through the musical jingle. Now, someone said that a jingle is just like adult education, where you need to, you know, a lot of people get so used to the information that is being spread or that is being shared through jingles. Therefore, we use the musical jingle to reach our audience. And then the, the method in getting to them, we, we um, organize a kind of, um, because it was a sponsored program anyway, we used um, radio stations to hear all of these um, jingles. We used um, animated cartoons as well as um, different um, focus group discussions where we discuss with people one-on-one -on -one via Zoom to tell them or to ask them to share their experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we found out was that a lot of them said they, because there was a kind of lockdown, so many of them decided to stay indoors at least for a few days, but they, they all complained that staying indoors was really not palatable. They had to just go out after the third day. But however, a lot of them recall that music helped them to relieve a kind of, um, it helped them, it gave them a, a, a kind of hope. It um, relieved them from uh, boredom, it made them feel good. They had a kind of satisfaction with themselves as a result of um, listening to music or listening to or watching cartoons, animations through television. And then a lot of them also said, despite the fact that this um, COVID-19 was spreading, they, they actually did not get so many information at the initial stage of how hazardous or how ravaging the COVID-19 pandemic was. But at the end of listening to music, that's musical jingles, at the end of watching cartoon animations via CNN, social media, they decided to take heed to those instructions that were given initially by the government. And this in all, we found out that helped them to cope effectively with the COVID-19 pandemic. And we saw that after that, the decline of or the death rate that was announced initially when the COVID-19 started in Lagos this, uh, begin to like decline. And then a lot of people were safe from um, whatever the COVID-19 would have imposed on them. And that was the findings we got during this um, research. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very brief and straight to the point. Multi talented residents face me, I face you in Lagos. The reception and precautions through music during COVID-19 era. And uh, the author or the presenter has done justice to it by telling us the essence, the import of music in coping with COVID-19, boredom, stress, and what have you during a uh, related problem like COVID-19 pandemic, Thank you very much. Can we go to, please, if you have questions for these presenters, you drop them in. 
um, you draw, drop them in the box or you are ready to speak, to ask your question when, we open, when the floor is open. So I want to call on Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Ndubusi to come with her paper um, that is titled Art in Mercy, the Impact of Expressive Art in Wellness. Over to you, Mrs. Ndubusi. Okay, I have uh, before Mrs. Indubusi comes in. I hope you are here. okay. You are here. This I know. This is the title of your article. Okay, uh, Mrs. Indubusi is offline. What's going on? Okay, let's have um, is Mr. Oluwaleka in there? Indubusi is here, please. A minute. Uh, I cannot see you. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry about that. So yes. you are loaded. You are loaded. That's why you are exploding. Good. No. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Please, uh, we'll be listening. Good morning. At, uh, can I go on, sir? Please carry on. All right. We'll be looking at uh, the impact of well-being on expressive arts. Sorry, the impact of expressive arts on well-being this morning. And uh, by so doing, we, we are able to look at the relationship between art and wellness. And we are able to look at how art can uh, affect people living in uh, both disability and uh, different ill health. And to be able to ascertain the effect of art on wellness, we look at the, the definition of uh, of health by the WHO, World Health Organization. And the WHO said that health is not simply the absence of physical illness or infirmity, but rather it's a complete physical, mental, social well, well-being. And by that, it means that you can not only get well, by taking medications. You can also get help by applying art therapy. And we're able to look at some reviews of literature, whereby some authors have looked at the effect of wellness, effect of arts on wellness and well being. And we looked at it from the emotions and arts aspects, from the artistic promotion of health, and from the inpatient care through arts. Because in applying art to wellness, you can achieve that through your own self-help. You can also achieve that by the means of therapy that could be applied by health practitioners. So we looked at all those literatures and we found out that most of the authors agree that there is an extent to which art can be of help to relieving people in pain and uh, different uh, health situation. But to further look at, to further ascertain the impact of art on wellness, we looked at uh, practical projects that have been carried out by different uh, researchers. And some of these uh, projects we are carried out among youths. So we are carried out uh, in the prison, looking at people that have been deprived of their freedom. And so we are among women in certain uh, area of uh, India. And the number one case study is that of effect of art therapy on uh, incarcerated women. And at the end of the research, the women confessed that creating art, because these women were made to use art 
to decorate murals, which is their traditional art, just like we have the Uli traditional arts among the Igbo women. In this part of Asia, they have their own traditional art, which is mural design. But to help them out of their incarceration, art therapists, we are able to gather these women, apply their, the art uh, on them, and they confess that the art has helped them, or helped them, rather helped them to create a meaning to life or to find meaning to life. And the organizers therefore agree that art therapy is one way to cultivate such um, feeling in incarcerated people. Then another um, case study is that of science of arts in the prison. A group of uh, inmates were gathered and were given art materials to interpret the word freedom. And this uh, project lasted for about six months, after which it was resolved by the organizers who were both psychologists and art uh, professors from a university in Finland. And then found out that the inmates were able to describe freedom in several ways. And through that period of the project, even the prison attendants were able to state that the project gave the inmates so much relief, so much joy, and that there was excitement in the prison uh, custody. Then the third case study is what we are doing presently. The initiative of art in medicine, which uh, started in 2012-2015 by Kunle Adewale. And studies were carried out in our health facilities here in Nigeria. One of the uh, participants of the Art in Medicine uh, projects in 2000 and 2018, according to Alak Boso, established that art created a lot of relief in our health facilities in the sickle cell unit of the children's world and other institutions that they use to find the effect of uh, health and well-being. Yeah. So we arrived at the conclusion that healing becomes rapid with creativity and imagination. The more we understand the connection between creative expression and healing, the more we will appreciate the art of creative, the creative powers of art. And this conclusion is because majority of the authors and majority of the project coordinators have been able to demonstrate that why purposeful creativity help in occupational therapy and rehabilitation for, for the sick ones, creative expression can also improve inpatient outcome. It can also improve even the, um, the feelings that the attendants in the hospitals receive. Because when we talk about creativity in, in health, it's both ways, both the patients and the caregivers. So even in some cases, even if the patient is using art, for instance, if it's a practical project, the caregiver who experiences it also have a, a sort of relief that it gives to the person. So in conclusion, we arrive that art is very, very effective in uh, wellness. Thank you.
Hello. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Art is essential to caregivers, also the patients and the caregivers. Thank you. Thank you. We we should reserve our questions for Dr. Ndubusi. Why we call on the incidentally, Mr. Tim cannot see coming. So he asked me to connect him through phone. Is it possible? Can we? Can it be done so that I put him on speaker? Hello? I don't know how effective that would be, sir. <laughs> he's trying to join. Even after dropping, he's trying to link. And so he called me. But OK, let's have um, Mr. Ade doing first before we we con I mean, before we go to that place. Maybe if we have, um, after, after all the people that are here have finished, we can link up with him to come up with his, with his uh, presentation. So I will call on Mr. Oluwale Kainde, are they doing, who is presenting on exploration of arts as a diversionary therapy in healthcare. Mr. Dedo, you are welcome on board. Good morning, everyone. You're welcome. So uh, exploration of art therapy, art as a diversionary therapy in healthcare. So I'll focus on the historical accounts of the, of the use of art therapy in human history. So the, the earliest document discovery of ancient art revealed that the prehistoric people have a better understanding of arts as an efficacy for healing and the source of supernatural power through the exploration of various creative process. This is evident in the painting, in their painting and sculptural figurines. Art, art, has, art has been a tool for recording history of uh, history for ages, artistic exploration of different civilizations around the world attest to the use of art as a therapeutic, as a therapeutic means not just as a sacrosanct medium in the religious life of the people. As human society began to evolve, a new cultural element began to surface through interaction. A case study of this is evident with the Greek use of color in healing. Sami, Sami said that uh, ancient, ancient Egyptians and Greek used colored minerals, stones, crystals, shells, salves, and dyes as medium and painted treatment, treatment, painted treat, treatment sanctuaries in various shapes of color. As society evolves, artistic exploration changes with time in serving human needs. The result, uh, the arts, the arts function as technology because it makes life easier in a subtle form. Art therefore forms the bridge between the ma between magic and medicine. Even the world they live. In it, they, they leave disperse them into shelters of different caves. Arts are stood as a common binder between one another. So, um, therapy is accompanied with rituals that are meant to relieve or suppress health problem. Art therapy is an is an ancient practice and oldest medical practice in the world. Art in this era were predominantly animal figures with bison, deer, uh, as the predominant uh, figures. Scholars believe that some of these figures were sacred to them and rituals were made. This practice serves as this, as the spiritual and medical, serves the spiritual and medical needs of the people through artistic, artistic exploration. For example, Zotars were prepared for hunting of wild animals and creating paintings of wild animals on caves. It is believed that hunters were uh, pos possessed by the spiritual strength of the people. So what we are saying here is that the ancient, the ancient, in the, the ancient people make use you make use of art as a means of therapeutic means in um, enhancing their well-being, not just their well-being, mental state. So, uh, uh, but one thing there is just that they they incorporate the use of magic and medicine together because. Uh, 
the, the ancient people all, all believe believe on the esoteric make something mystic. So unlike we the modern world. So the the historical the result shows that historical accounts of different ways of different the historical account shows different ways in art therapy as it is accompanied as, as it is employed in cultures around the world. Prehistoric cave paintings and sculptures were the earliest therapy techniques. Art used by humans, art, art used by humans. The arise the, the rise of agrarian civilization made way for various diversionary theory, diversionary implementation of art in healthcare. The agrarian civilization is uh, is is an era of, of the peak of the is uh, let me okay the Babylonian Empire, the the era of the Babylonian uh, Empire and the Assyrian, the Akkadian, because then uh, women became uh, feel like they want to set to and they want to create a, a kind of a new society, a new civilization. So they had to like move to all and the Babylonian uh, Empire. Although, so. The, for, for thousands of years, art therapy has been proving, proving positive in, in, in health. In the 20th century, the 20th century was an era of great interest in the field of art therapy by writers. So writers, writers around the world started uh, focusing on art, the use of uh, the word art therapy. And in Europe, it's, uh, it, uh, it was made uh, writers, uh, Europe, the Europe focused on the, on, on the word art therapy. Art therapy, and it was also used in in the World War in 19 around the 1950s and 1920s. It was administered to the to the veterans who participated in World War. So, art therapy in various means, which uh, so art therapy in various means with striking similarities, is their in, in is the, in their practices. With the aid of scientific research field of neuroscience, we can deduce. Uh, it is effective. It is it, it, it is effectiveness with and uh, uh, what differentiates the ancient from the modern in their process. The field of art therapy should be seen as an hybrid. What if, I mean, what differentiates them of uh, the ancient and the modern is their process, and the use of art should be seen as a, a as an hybrid field that offers diverse solution in health health sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oluwaleka in the Adi Doi. Thank you, sir. For the presentation on explorations of art as a diversionary therapy in healthcare. Um, questions are awaiting you. Why we go to another presenter? Do we have any other person in house here who is a presenter? I'm just scrolling through. Okay. We don't have, um, I have, I've put a call through to some people also who are, who are supposed to be online. Hopefully they will join us before we finish with Mr. Etim and myself. Um, I think I should be given opportunity to do my own, or I do it after others have presented. <laughs> Franca, should we listen Sorry. to Etim now, or? You can do yours, then okay. you take questions. If they join, then you can do theirs as a second session. So please, can you make me co-host? You are co-host, sir. OK. So let me get my slides ready. Please give me just a few seconds. 
Yeah. Yeah, good morning once again. I want to speak on the impacts of, uh, of origami therapy challenge on children and youths during the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, let me just explain the origami therapy challenge, what it means. It was a name given to group of um, activity that was, that, that was done Darlin, can we hear me? Hello, can we hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Yeah. Group of um, activities that were done during the pandemic um, lockdown. And you will see that the pandemic was really the problem that was at hand, even as at now, we are still battling with it. So varying responses ranging from government's proactive intentions, diverse involvement of artists, industrial arts, artisans, many hands were on, 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 on deck, working to make sure that they salvage the situation. Some were game, gamefully engaged in producing face masks, safety kits, why some individuals of augmented government efforts, uh, government gestures by following guidelines, staying safe. Several virtual workshops also were held to impact adults, children with hands-on skills. You see, many activities were going on at that time. Many, many, many. And so this study discusses origami as at activities and how it was deployed as useful tools of engagement during the lockdown. At the initial engagement, the initial registration, the fallout of this program actually was uh, from the 2020 cohorts of arts in medicine. I got in contact with the training, just one about two hours during the lockdown, somebody came to, to teach. It's what, it was part, part of the programs at that time. And somebody came to teach origami. And after that, a platform was opened that was called Origami Therapy Challenge. So that's where the, the name is coined from. And uh, let me go on. The study focuses on an exercise which was used to engage people, especially youth children in virtual arts during the lockdown. And the impact on them were also recorded. The challenge was on learning how to fold papers to create desirable objects with theme fly away. You see, when we say fly away, it connotes many, many things for many people. Fly away is a kind of freedom. And so it was and it's the expectation of people, the participants, that they will get out of this predicament. They will get out of this problem, like a bird that was in the cage and was released. And eventually, you know, he's going to fly to the top of the tree and begin to sing song. Then the objectives of the study is to help explore the merits of origami in mental health and uh, learn art discipline and to create a reasonable number of origami models the, during the period of lockdown. Three, to create an origami elite community. 
the research design, the research made use of non-experimental research, a longitudinal design that examines the performance exhibited by the participants under the study over a period of time. And the period of 21 days, that is three weeks during the lockdown was used with a task to model every day, a task to model every day. And initially we have about 72 participants, majority of who were adults, I mean youths, and some were professionals, uh, uh, graduates, students, and few, a few like myself were gainfully employed. So we have also 72 different bed names were adopted as code names by all participants. And these code names were used as at the point of submitting each project daily. And the projects were harvested and were harvested and responses were documented. These are the names. I hope you, are, you can see the, the list with the, with the code names. The, this is the list with the code names. Then we have these projects here, fly away. We have fly away here that we engage in. And we use this, the, the topics underneath the fly away project. Number one was crane, the crane project. Number two, we have the origami butterfly. Number three, we have origami hat, sailboat, origami crown, frog, origami ball, rabbit, robin star, origami dress, hat envelope, robin star two, origami dolphin, that's a fish. Tulip flower, those were 14 different projects that were engaged in and the result, I will soon show us the result number one because of the activities, I'm going to roll them out. But let me just finish with the, the ones that are written. The responses from participants. Number one, I will bring out four of the responses. Rose Willie, with code name Pengium, says, well, I'm an artist and honestly, the corona era should have motivated me to create, rather it demoralized me and I could not do anything. I was, in, I was not in tune with my artistic side. The origami challenge was just the therapy I needed. I got to explore with papers and it brought me back, to, it brought back life in me. It impacted me a lot of a lot because it reignited the artistic fire in me and it dispersed the depression that was beginning to grow inside of me. Another one says, which is precious around me, the engagement has really helped me help my creative skills. I am a fashion designer and I see different designs come out each day. So I enjoy, I joined to prove, to improve my skills. You can see this person, a fashion designer, and he's beginning, to, she was beginning to see many, many styles. You know, when you cut paper, when you fold paper, you begin to see many shapes that you can adopt and apply it into fashion designing. I have learned a lot and thanks for giving me, so, uh, for giving someone like me this opportunity. Another comment says, origami is something I'll always do in my free time. And when I get stressed out because it is therapeutic and I derive pleasure in it, it has helped improve my mental concentration, patience, and attention because you will be absorbed. You have to emit yourself. Your concentration is in it, folding different stages. It relieves me of stress and keeps me sane in this challenging period. That same be out also, this person also had trainees. She equally impacted. That was one thing we did that was done that time. Many people that were that registered online also had people they were training in-house, children in their houses. When they learn, they also impact them. So that, and that was a very good approach to teaching, to learning and teaching. Because when you teach, you learn more. And it makes the, 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 the learning or whatever you have learned to register permanently. Number four, origami therapy has really helped, been helpful to me. 
these past few weeks as a health worker. This person was a health worker and it is a form of diversion therapy for me and I've learned more on how to stay focused. So we see, uh, maybe let me go to another slide and, and give you the rundown because the stages of the production, let me see. Okay. Yeah, you see OTC, that's origami therapy shall then fly away. This is the collage of the participants of the program. And uh, you see, starting from the first project, origami crane, moving, moving, moving to butterfly. That's on May 26, 2020. And I uh, the love, I mean heart, that's the model, the project for heart. You see the participants showing and snapping after each model and displaying them on the on the group. 27th May, this one was done, 28th. Yes. 10 minutes, it's over. Thank you very much. Yes, I have, I just say, let me just give you the, the, the folds, the pictures of the folds that were done over the period of 21 days, that many, Thank you very much. So conclusively, um, although 12 part 12, 72 participants registered, only 12 participants completed the 21 day origami therapy challenge. But all participants were grateful to have enrolled. So then it was an awesome experience overall. The exercise helped them to improve their mental health and focus, focus patients and provide the best stress relief remedy and coping mechanism during COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So okay. we go to the next presenter. I think some Thank you. Thank you. now. Mr. Uh, Savage, Mr. Savage that is joining us. You are welcome, Mr. Chagun Savage. Thank you very much. Yeah, he's another presenter. So please come up and let us have your. He is the lead presenter. The, the paper is co authored. Uh, there are four people that are co authoring the paper. We have Ola Bode doing from, okay, all about it doing Gadonu, Peter, and Kosoko, Roger, the four of them are authoring the article. Thank you very much for welcome. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Adele. Okay, I want to appreciate the organizers of this program. I hope you can hear me. Please, we can hear you. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Adele. Yes, once again, I want to appreciate the organizers of this uh, Art and Health. Uh, it's a laudable one, and um, we thank God. Okay, my very uh, straightforward, my paper is, uh, our paper is titled, The Evolution of the Nigerian Contemporary Arts in Health Delivery. Um, we all know very well that art in the past have always been decorative at most, a functional art, maybe making of utensils, but gradually we see it evolving as a, a tool for health delivery. It is becoming therapeutic and so is one of the essence 
of this study. Apart from that, it has also been observed that the art market is growing very wide and a lot of artists are being turned out yearly. And uh, we discovered also that some set of people, some generation in this art have dominated the market space. And now that we find art in health is an opening, is another opportunity for the artist to synergize with other professions. Like I noted in my paper, in this paper, hardly. In fact, this is the era that we talk about interdisciplinary engagement. And the art have been found to be very uh, relevant to virtually all the profession. What profession do you want to go into? What, do you, what project do you want to do that you will not mention art or that you will not need the input of an artist, however minute? Looking at it from health, from education, transportation, environmental, art has played prominent role. Even when you look at even the construction sites, you will see effigy that are made and they direct us, please don't cross this path. If you check the road very well, the signages on the road, they are product of art. So this tells us that art has become very relevant to virtually all the professions that exist in life. So it is in the light of this mood that we, what we are looking at the relevance of art in health delivery. Number one, if you look at art, our interests is particularly on the various arts that were exhibited at Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Those arts are very captivating, very reassuring, and um, embellishing. One of the things we want to bring out from those art, this paper is an analysis, really, is an analysis of the arts, the few arts that have been documented at Lasso. One, when you get to Lasso, I don't know of any, where you have to survey Lagos, particularly survey any health institutions or establishments, Lasso have towered in the engagement with the arts. If you check from the entrance, there are signages of different colors. Entering into the into Lasso, you find mural all over, even from the main gate, from the fences of the institution, there are mural. These mural are not there for nothing's sake. They pass several messages and we'll be touching them very briefly because of our time. If you also find, they have also, they have used graphic design in the area of signage. When you look at Aike House, Aike House mm -hmm. is basically the Institute of Mother, Maternal and Child Health Care Delivery Center. And very boldly, you will find Aike House. That's a graphic product. The visibility must be appreciated. Number one, it eases those that are coming in to visit or to use the facilities. The boldness of the, the IK house would definitely not make anyone to miss that place. Even if the person, by, by virtue of ill health or sickness, even if that person misses other people around there, just simply asking, where is IK house? somebody will readily recall, ah, this is it boldly written here. So it's have several messages and those messages have also been highlighted in the paper. The second one, I also want to mention, there are two murals. There are several murals, but particularly we have taken two of the murals. One of the murals is what is tagged nursing care. When you look at this mural, I just hope the 
I just hope the is on page five. I hope it can be it can be projected. I'm trying to see the possibility of projecting it. If you check this mirror at uh, last week, is it I titled it nursing care mirror. In this nursing care mirror, you will find a lady who is, who is assumed to be a nurse. The lady is, yeah. Do you wish to share your screen? Yes. Oh, your course, feel free to share your screen. Okay. I'm trying to get that done. I want to share. It's okay. I'm coming. Sorry, just a minute. Okay. Okay. While I'm trying, while I'm trying to share the screen, I think I can quickly, I can quickly talk about. Yes. I'm sorry. Just got uh, this information some minutes ago. Okay. Okay, sorry, without wasting time. Okay, on the on the mural, yes, open it. On the mural, you will find a lady pushing. Sorry, I'm trying to share my screen. It's there. Huh? This is fine. Okay. Sorry, trying to share. Okay. While I'm sorting out that, I think I can still continue. Okay, you'll find a lady pushing, pushing somebody who is debil, somebody who is ill health, somebody who is having ill health. Hello? Someone who is having ill health. And if you look at the three figures, the three images that are in this mural, they show degree of recuperation. They show degree of the nursing care delivery. We will see the one that is being pushed on the wheel specifically tells us that this person is helpless and there is a nurse there who is attending to this person. Now, the second person you will find using crushes. The person using crushes simply tells us analytically that there is a degree of recovery. And then the last image there, the person is merely using a staff. And the three show the different degree of nursing care. Keep going, keep scrolling. It shows degree of nursing care at last week. Besides, they have also used different colors, just opposing different colors. These colors, they have their implication in the art, even though we know that color itself is subjective, but there are basic rules. Where we find blue, it shows calmness, it shows reassurance of recovery. Where you find red, it also tells you it's blood, it's life. It tells you that in this infirmary, no, is it? Is it? It's okay. Don't worry. I'll get back to you. Sorry, I'll get back with the images there after this. I also want to talk about the other mirror. That mirror is a perioperative procedures. It's a painting. Number one, when you look at this mirror, this mirror was done painterly. Besides the fact that it is a mirror, so you have a feeling that it's a canvas work. You have a feeling that is done on a wall. It is two sides. And in this mural, they have, the artist did it painterly. It, 
the, the, the focal point, there are, there are different lines. Hello? Can no. you... Okay. I think we lost him. What's going on? Okay. I, I think we can proceed because he has overshot the allotted time. Okay. Yeah. Let me, I don't know and if anybody, anyone else has joined us. The screen is not even showing here. I can't see the list. Okay, let me, okay, I can't see now. I think is line dropped, so. Hello, sir. Yeah, can you please call me back? I think we want to listen to Mr. Etim, why he presents his paper He has been having challenges on putting a call through or link, linking up with the connecting up. So what we will do is to listen, to have him on a call to present his paper. So while we are waiting for his call, we have to do that because we still have, um, we don't have any other person. If we have people presenting, we may not have time for that. But let us allow him because we, we don't have people on ground again. At least what we have listened to from Mr. Uh, Savage is a captivating presentation and very interesting. How I love, how I wish that he, he finished the something, but he couldn't. A very wonderful presentation. So we listen to Mr. Yes, sir. Thank you. So you are you are on now. Please, can you please go on and speak okay. to your paper? Ten minutes, please. Okay. Um, good morning. My name is um, Ipsi Mekbeon. And the title of my paper is a role of. Please uh, hold on, hold on. Let me ask whether they are they are hearing. Hello, Franca. Please, can you hear? Not clearly. Not okay, clearly. Voice, I can't decipher. Please what? raise up your voice, please. Okay. I said the the title of my paper is the role of art against the spread of COVID nineteen. Can you hear that? Can we hear that? Hello? Uh, no, I'm I'm asking, testing whether they can hear me. Okay, okay. Can you hear, please? Franca, I want you to answer. Yeah. Yes, I can hear. Louder now. Can, let them let, let us can be louder. Okay. Okay. Louder. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the, the title of my paper is, is the role of art against the spread of COVID 19. Art is the ability to think and bring into reality informative images either in two or three dimensional forms and performances for aesthetic, functional, entertainment and educative purposes. It is a whole bunch of related activities because all requires creative thinking and unique qualities for their execution. Artists are not self-practitioners. However, their works are effectively aiding 
the rehabilitation and, pre and preservation of millions and preservation of millions of lives all over the world from arts therapy and now in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. The printing industry is leading the awareness campaign of World Health Organization on the need to adhere to the instructions given on how to curtail the spread of this deadly virus. Instructions, illustrations rather, with captions that speak volume on how the deadly virus can be curtailed were produced. I just found that the efficacy of art in communication cannot be denied. It proved to have aided quick assimilation and understanding even among non illiterate non literate rather, thereby prompting the target audience to obey the directives therein. Communicating preventive measures to a mass audience through art. The World Health Organization and the Nigerian Council of Disease Control have prescribed several preventive measures against the swift and deadly spread of coronavirus and to enable the quick assimilation by all and sundry. Hence, creative minds the world over were required to produce artworks ranging from illustrative drawings, photography, music, skits, etc., to enable for a rapid grasp by their target audience, which, of course, is the general populace. These works of art include. Uh, works of art uh, includes uh, illustrative drawings that, uh, that have to do with social distancing, uh, the need to stay at home, washing of hands with water under running water for at least 20, 20 seconds, and personal hygiene. Moreover, communicating the symptoms of COVID-19 through illustrative drawings with captures is indeed very effective as it is easily decoded by the target audience. Moreover, graffiti which is another effective tool employed by artists to disseminate information to a wide range of audience or were also employed. These bold metaphors on walls are easily construed as their further aided adherence to WHO's advice on how to curtail the spread of the deadly virus. Furthermore, music and skits are also very effective because the information they seek to disseminate can be easily decoded by all. It is therefore recommended that artists be given all the um, enablement they require to function effectively in our society because they play a fundamental role in the preservation and enhancement of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, sorry for for not hearing clearly, but I, at least we can pick one or two things from what um, a team has told us. Can we hear a little, Mr. I mean, Franca? Sir? Franca, please. Was he audible enough? I struggled to hear him at times. Oh, so meaning that if you struggle to hear, it means that uh, many people also will struggle to, to hear. Um, I think what the bottom line of what uh, Mr. Etim was saying was a function, function of art. All the aspects of art in, I mean, during the coronavirus pandemic era that starting from the instruction of what to do, even the, the coronavirus, the presentation of the coronavirus itself, it's not visible, it's something that is not visible, but it was made visible through the works of art. <laughs> Corona, yes, that's how people, many people get to know the awareness about the, the uh, um, coronavirus as if, I mean, that virus itself, the awareness people wouldn't have known without the impact of art. The color is also telling us about danger. It's fascinating, really, but it's telling us about the danger. 
then uh, the awareness continues, the warning, and many, um, the creative industry, creative personalities, they have impact to play in, the, in, in, in uh, ensuring the safety of people during the pandemic era. Even people that created face masks, they are artists. All the safety equipment they use, they are all forms of art. So that's what he uh, talked about. That's the little I could, I could capture, but that's the summary of his uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Do we have any other one, any other person joining us? Um, who is supposed to present today? Please let us know. If not, then we'll go to question time. So please, you drop your question in the chat box or you, you, you give us signal in the chat box, give us the signal that you want to, you want to ask question. We will allow you to ask your question, either verbally or by text. Hello, everybody in the house. Presenters, you can also ask questions from other presenters. And the listeners as well can also have ask questions. Where are we? Okay. Can we all, um, Franka, can we all, um, can we unmute our listeners, the participants rather? Can you okay. unmute them so that maybe the, all of them should be, the, the mic should be unmuted now. And let us hear comments from them. Provided their background is not noisy anyway. Hello. Okay, I think I should begin to call us one by one. Let me start from Mr. Oluwale Are you doing? Do you have any Hello. do you have any observation, any comment? Sir, on the previous uh, on the previous um, presentation, I would like if uh, I can get the definition for hearts, the the person that presented. Just now. Okay, the last presenter. Yeah, the last presenter the is the definition on hearts. Okay. Well, I think okay. the presenter is is you know called through phone. Call uh, through no, okay. Who's that? Who's that? Okay. Now you see that's Mr. Salvage. Yeah. Please, I we want you to we want you to lessen your background noise if you are muted. If you are sure you will be, you have background noise, please mute your mics. But if not, you can unmute so that so that you can chat, we can discuss. Now this is the time to discuss and deliberate. And now somebody has asked from the last speaker, he wants to hear the definition of arts. Arts. Sir, I don't know if anyone is so I'm, I'm passing through this to everyone. That's what it's I'm saying. We want to discuss. Art. It's a discussion now for them art. to talk. Okay. You yeah. said art is the ability to bring two dimensional, two and three dimensional into images. I, I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm correct. I also want to take that down. I love that de definition. Okay. Sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. While others are responding, I think I will, I will check through, I'll confirm. But okay, let us have people responding and discuss, deliberate. Because as is a, is a, if it's an endless, you are giving, it's like, it is a, it is not really definition. You can't have the de definition for art, but a concept. Can we call it a- You have to explore and explore, explore. And so, hello, somebody's talking. Oh yes, good morning, sir. I was just thinking, 
while we were talking that could I be called a transformation, oh. a transforming yeah. process? Please. Because whatever I do, it transforms. Hello, hello, please. Hello. Can we have your name then? Oh, my name is Adetayo. I did doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was what I just thought about art, a trans, um, Carry on. transforming process, a transforming process. Because for everything every speaker has said, art has been proven to transform environments and situations. I don't know if I'm correct. That's why I said, okay, thank you very much. It's, it's, but you see, you have reasons for saying that. And so you, yes, nobody sir. can say you are wrong because it has, it has taken care of a certain part of the, the, the body, the body of art. So it's also welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Can I also add that? Hello, sir. Yeah, please go on. Yes, sir. Can I also add that is the expression of human creative skill and imagination, typically yeah, in different art forms, producing works to be appreciated for their beauty and emotional power. Thank you. That is key. That is good. What you have said is good. And it's one of, in fact, it has been the, 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 uh, the, the definition, definition of art over the years. But when you open up, when you open up art, it's more than the beauty alone. It's more than aesthetics alone. People say aesthetics, aesthetics. What led us into art in mercy? What led us into therapeutic value of art? It is not the beauty alone. Are you getting me? Hello, sir. Can I can I come in here? Yeah, it is so not the beauty, beauty yeah. on the line. Thank you. Yes, uh, I think I agree with you. It's not uh, basically the beauty, and uh, I would also want to take us back to the last presenter. Um, mm. He mentioned or presented an angle that I never thought of. You know, mm -hmm. at the inception of uh, coronavirus, it was like a uh, microorganism, how to see, how to everything. But mm -hmm. with the um, help of art, yeah. we can just close our eyes and figure out or- uh, <laughs> What and the problem you, is. Not just what the problem is, even what it looks like by the illustration that the artist was able to bring out these microscopic organisms, we now see it mm -hmm. and know the color, know what it looks like, know the features. So that's some of the powers of art. It's kind of, uh, art is really, really helpful in research because without it, no matter your field, you might not even be able to bring out that which you are, that which you are investigating to form. But art will help you to bring it and expose it to even the layman to understand. Thank you. Any other comment, please? Yeah. Uh, sir. Yes. Uh, I just want to, uh, based on what she said, she said uh, uh, art uh, uh, it'll, it'll help us uh, with the COVID 19, like bringing out some images. In, uh, like yeah. the images. So uh, yeah. based on uh, uh, researches and other uh, creative fields like that artists okay. have uh, explored for years, we can deduce that art has been um, working or serving as a medium for, for expressing and, and revealing the hidden, the, the hidden secrets of, of humanity and, and, uh, and the environment. Because uh, based on uh, Leonardo da Vinci's uh, anatomical uh, drawings and sketches, we can deduce that uh, he was even the one that even focused on um, human anatomy, and that is part of medicine. So that's all. Thank you. Uh, just to cap it, the visibility of all other, you know, we talk about art. It could be visual, it could be non-visual, but in most cases, the one you are referring to, the visibility of other professions, be well yes, noticed sir. through art art. I was teaching some some people on Monday were discussing this art of a thing. I said in a vehicle, what is art there? What is science? We're just analyzing. So going further, I said 
They said it is the body, the packaging. I said, okay, that the engine is the science. I said, you mean the engine is science? The engine is also a form. It's a form that is done, that is, that is um, what is it called? It is a cast from molds done by artists. So we're just analyzing, and by the time we continue and we went further, we discovered that art is very broad. Even the ones that are not so beauty, I mean, I mean, they are not, we can't talk about the fact that they are so beautiful, but to the person that is doing it as a patient, that is what he is giving back to. It is what is coming from, the expression coming from his mind or her mind, and it is original. It is raw. It is like a window that the person is opening and you see the real problem and solution coming, you provide solution to it. So it is not only about aesthetics, that's what we are talking about. <laughs> it is It is even the one that we call, you know, it is academics and the professionals that really pigeonhole art into, um, this one is good, this one is not good. But in the larger society, you want to make money now. The gallery owners will tell you this one is not good. This one, and so they tag money on the one that is good. But the ones that are not good, like Mr. Kule said yesterday somewhere, that when he was in school, the colleagues would drop his work somewhere. So he was frustrated. I said, ah, what is this problem? <laughs> frustrated, my work is not good. So it will be the last one in the class. <laughs> but then, so a patient that is bringing this one out is a healing process for him. The process of doing that, what we call bad, <laughs> that is not so aesthetic by the, by the, the artist himself, it may be a patient, is, is the therapy we are talking about, is the, 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 the therapeutic process we are talking about. So it's very wide day by day. Art is becoming wide. Don't forget creative arts. When we talk about art, we are talking about the umbrella, which encompasses music, encompasses uh, what's it called, dance, drama, encompasses visual, and visual also is very very wide, very very wide. So that is just uh, what I have to say. I don't know whether Mr. Savage is back to also expand it, and we have uh, who also there, please. As many as are in house, you are free to discuss. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah, there's a noise from the background. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, very well. I think uh, one thing I want to add to all that have been said. You see, if you look at the various yeah. images, the various illustrations that were made yeah. of COVID-19. They were please, each noise from your, in your background, please. Okay, thank you. I'm taking care of that. Now, you will observe that the COVID-19 images, the illustrations that we had, they were mm. different artist expressions. It, exactly. it, means that it means that the way I'm seeing it, the other person may not be seeing it that way. If you look at some, some are very grotesque. They are very scary. That's the way the person, and it sends messages globally that people that made people to be very scared because of the way each artist each artist expresses or illustrated what COVID-19 is. I think that's the area I actually want to pinpoint. Thank you. Yeah. So we are we have a few minutes more to to close this session. Do we have people who still want to talk? Who still want to contribute to the discourse? Or who wants to ask questions? Um. OK. Um, Franca. Sir? Anything from your end there? Not particularly. I'm looking forward to the observation and possible feedback for each presenter. I think that hasn't really been done. That's what I'm saying. That uh... let us have let us let us talk. What is our own view? What we have talked discussed so far. We are talking from our own angle. 
It's okay. But don't forget what's the angle of government? What's okay. the angle of the society? Can I come in, please? Please come in. Good. I, I want to suggest that, or I'm hoping that after this conference, there will be a communique, the resolution to government, particularly. You know, I particularly spoke about the arts at Lagos State University teaching us. We too, very expressive. The illustration were very clear and very therapeutic. If you look at it, they, they even provide wayfinding. I want to suggest there are not many government hospitals that have this art around them. Perhaps because government has not known the inevitability of this art production. Even there's something I also observed at last week. It is only the outdoor art that we have. Remember that most of the patients they will be indoor for consultation. And those that are in the world, they will be there for a long time. So the outdoor artwork there, the outdoor works there are transient, they are temporary. So we need to advise government to come. If you check through my paper, there are researches, there are findings I made that even in global, in, in the Euro and America, they have adopted the use of art for recovery in health. So I think our government too needs to be advised, need to be educated to see the relevance of art in the healing process. That's Thank you. I, I think uh, yes. also before we go there, um, I think I have, I support what we are saying because, yeah. and I want to make this general comment that all the uh, papers in the conclusion, there must be recommendation for government. Yes. I mean, there must, sorry, there must be recommendations. Yes. Now, uh, Mr. Savage has mentioned something that is, which I know many researchers will always want to do. There's a key point there that we need to also know or note. Apart from government, um, advising government to do blah, 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 blah. We equally need to em encourage the stakeholders the stakeholders in health, the whole stakeholders in um, psychology or whatever, counseling, the yeah. stakeholders in arts, arts, and other stakeholders that they should be involved. Because if personnel are not on ground, just like they did for 6334 and creative arts in all schools, they just roll out the program without training professionals for over five years running before they launch the program. And that has been that has been thwarting and destroying our program. I mean, good, good programs that are well crafted and uh, having good intention by government have been thwarted because manpower were not sourced for, were not taught off five years, 10 years before launching the program. And so that is a booby trap. If anything comes up and the program is launched tomorrow, I say, oh, we just put it, it will be on paper. It will not be done very well as it's done overseas if we eventually go into that. So what I'm saying is that stakeholders should embrace this now. They should embrace this um, new area of impacting the health mental health of citizens. We need it more in Nigeria because all things that have been happening since early 2000 is they are impacting mental health of people. They are really negatively. Things we are having now, <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, they have, been, they have been having it in the north. We are just having the insurgents here everywhere, kidnapping and all this is uh, more uh, fighting, killings. But 15 years ago, it has been happening in the north. You now imagine their mental health now about 20 years. We are just we are just experiencing about five years. We are complaining. So apart from financial stress also is there, but many economic stress, talk less of insurgency. So we need it most in Africa and in Nigeria. And because of that, me and you who are artists, me and Franca, who is a, a health, uh, practitioner, the doctors, the nurses, we are the ones that will be the, found, the, the foundation pillar 
and carry this burden. When personnel are now available, I mean, people that would drive the programs are well equipped. You know, the program is good to go. Whenever government says, okay, we want to, that's my. Can I say um, something, please? Okay, hello. Yeah. Yeah, can I say? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, we have Sorry, two minutes sir. more. <laughs> yes. Hello, hello sir. Okay. Adi, yes, I tell you, I did doing. Please go. Okay, just to quickly say, concerning <laughs> last week, I actually wrote a letter to um, to Professor Fabanwo, uh, Fabanwo, the um chief medical director, yeah. and he said, even though Lagos State um, do not have the funding, that's what he said, but he actually gave me the carte blanche that I could do, do up or any children's hospital. So I actually started with the special baby unit, which I've done earlier on this year. But what I did was I got, I used my money, got fundings from friends. So maybe they're also, instead of waiting for the government, if we can find alternate ways, through companies that do um, CSR, corporate. So I think that if the government see that people are making efforts, then they will stand up. Okay, and I follow think Franka is, not, is not in all those things. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, yes. can I come in? Yeah. It's okay. Come yes, when we talk about what we are saying now, we are talking about interdisciplinary engagement. And I'm bringing in all the stakeholders, the health practitioners, the nurses, the doctors, the artists. But particularly, I observe that, or I want to believe that majority of Hello, us are. Mr. Hello. Savage. Yes. What I'm saying, what I said was that our developing ourselves okay, to, be, to be qualified. Okay, that's yes, where I'm going. That's where I'm going. Running, before yeah. running the program, before yeah. government begins to. And then yeah. government starts. It's okay. That's where I'm going. You see? Like I said, in, also in my um, recommendation, I think for majority of us that are in the academics, we can start training our students how to use hats for health recovery in some of the assignments that we give them or the write-up that we give them. Because artists then also advise that the medical doctors, in fact, there, there is an American Association of American medical um, academics, they are already suggesting, I think 2000, there is a paper I discovered on the name, 2017, they are saying that the medical doctor should also be trained artistically or aesthetically. But we in, yes, we in the art here, yeah, we in the art too, we need to train our students, you understand, how to use arts, how to use art and health, how to marry the two together, and come out with illustrations that are recuperating, that have the healing therapy, and so on. So we, I think we should start from our students too, and, and okay. that will help. That's my that's, suggestion. That's, that's, that's part of what we have been planning. And that's why the next cohort now, where we are thinking, all of us who are here, let us encourage our people the students who have graduated um, and uh, our colleagues, let us encourage them to take a fellowship form. And let's see how, because when they go through this thing, it will help them to navigate. And as a matter of fact, many of our colleagues, senior colleagues, professors, they, they don't even know anything about this thing. So when it is mentioned before them, they trash it, they throw it somewhere. But when they see the reality, when they see the reality, definitely they will give they will give up, they will give way for some of this. And so thank you very much for yeah. that suggestion. Thank we you. will continue to is before us, let us continue to engage our students and uh, involve them and our colleagues. Any other thing because we're winding up now. Hello, sir. Yes. I I I would suggest if uh, art, uh, art therapy or a therapeutical means or neuro field of neuroscience can be can be introduced to all fields in uh, of academics in Nigeria, whether from the tertiary to it, the primary yes. or the secondary school, because is, Nigeria, sir, okay, because, because Nigeria is a country uh, a, a country that when we want to trace the history of Nigeria, it is based on environmental victimization, and this has caused a kind of stress. 
in everybody. Yeah. So the tension is is almost everywhere. But but when we incorporate it, when people start get get like uh, uh, start, uh, are aware of the use of therapy and heart or the field of neurosciences in in improving or enhancing their health right from their early age. It will help them uh, as a, when they grow older as an adult, and it will encourage the new future leaders because there's no someone is still going to come in who will be a governor, or a president, and this will uh, help us to incorporate the use of the field of neuroscience and heart therapy in in Nigeria. Thank you. Um, I think one of the reasons for having this conference is what we are hammering on. Uh, the, bringing it into curriculum may not be feasible now because almost everyone, everyone who is a, if you have a writing teachers association of Nigeria, they want the writing to be done in university also, to the university level. But I know the most important will survive later. And five years ago, this type of conference was not done. The essence of this one is to create awareness. One of the reasons is to create awareness and make government to know. Ministers of uh, Minister of uh, um, Health or whatever was invited for this conference, but he has to ask um, Lagos State. Okay, I think Governor of Lagos State was invited, so he has the Commissioner of Health to come and represent him. No, definitely no. after this time, the next one we will be having. We'll be inviting the Minister of Health. Gradually, we will get there. That's what we're yeah. saying. But the awareness has started. The people that get to know it in Lagos, and since it started from Lagos, definitely it will get to all other places. Thank definitely. you. Definitely. Thank you. So, just as uh, the Minister was actually invited, he sent the delegates. Okay. Thank you very much for that information. Please go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, and inform us more. Oh, he was actually invited. He was thrilled by the idea yeah. and he sent the delegate, Dr. the MD of Federal Neuro Psychiatric Hospital. Jesus. And she was in Dr. attendance Obu. yesterday. Okay, Dr. Obu. That that's fine. That's fine. Because um some projects were 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 um were inaugurated yesterday, some projects were, were commissioned yesterday at Neuropsychiatric Hospital <laughs> and uh, Sickle Cell Center. Yeah. And those are fantastic programs that will go that went over all over the world. Um, US consulate representative also was there. So it's, this is something that has started and eventually will evolve, <clears throat> evolve. And if we don't give up, we'll get there. And yeah. the recognition will come later. And many people will enjoy the benefits of art in health. From different, from all professions, all, all walks of life. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, in absence of any post person that is presenting, we are calling it a day for this uh, section before of paper presentation of National Art in Health Conference 2021. I want to appreciate Ms. Adedoyi Adetayo for coming, Olusegun Salvage for being around, Allah Uhuru Blessing for being Thank here, you. Dr. Shinriere, and uh, um, Oluwale Adedoyi, Dr. Nweke for being around. I think uh, Mrs. Um, Princess Odozi also was in before, logged on before, but She's out, and many other people that logged in and dropped out. We appreciate you very much. On behalf of the Arts in Mercy Fellowship, we appreciate your presence and your coming. Thank um, you. Hopefully, the papers, the articles you have presented must be worked upon for corrections, for good conclusions, strong conclusions.